And we're going to take the local organising issue a little bit further now because we've got Richard Brenner with four comrades from different parts of the country who are organising in different ways in their local communities. We've got Stephen Foster, um, we've got Stuart Halferty, we've got Dave Holm, we've got Len Arthur who are joining us with Richard. So Richard, I'm going to hand over chairing the panel to you now. Um, welcome, comrade. Thanks very much. And what a, what a meeting it's been so far. Um, and uh, there's been so many uh, uh, comments that have made about the importance of local organising and about the importance of uniting the different forces in the working class uh, uh, and, and socialist movement and fighting back. And there's been talk about, uh, about Iran and popular assemblies and the need for people to stick together and support one another. And so uh, really, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the what, what SLN uh, Socialist Labour Network decided to do jointly with the uh, with, with the network of shadow constituency Labour parties was to write to all of the organisations um, that are fighting back in Britain. We wrote to ACORN, we wrote to People's Assembly, we wrote to the RMT, the UCU, we wrote to the CWU, uh, 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 and we uh, and we uh, proposed that uh, we all come together in uh, local anti-price rise unions in every town and city across the country. Um, and um, and uh, uh, a, a sort of form of that idea uh, appeared to already have uh, taken shape. We saw the CWU um, and, uh, and ACORN launching Enough is Enough at, na uh, at a national level. We saw the new Don't Pay campaign springing apparently out of nowhere, organized by uh, people that we don't know. Uh, who, uh, who who called on people not to pay? Uh, we see the enough is enough group support um, um, calling for uh, supporting the strikes um, and, uh, and, uh, and and fighting for uh, a freeze on prices, a freeze on rents, and uh, and uh, uh, above inflation pay rises everywhere. Um, but what we didn't see until very recently was the actual emergence of the local groups that we have, have proposed. So actually seeing them start to come into shape on the ground. They're not the people's assemblies that a man has proposed that could form an alternative power base in society and maybe one day the basis for a working class government in Britain, uh, but um, they are signs of working class uh, people coming together from a range of different organisations and taking action, including some of them taking shape quite fast. What I'd like to do, um, if it's possible, is if we could if we could have the uh, have all of the, uh, the, the 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 speakers from the uh, from those groups, Len, Steve, um, Stuart, and um, uh, uh, and uh, 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 Dave uh, on screen, as it were, that would be really great. Uh, and um, uh, that's good. So we're spotlighting multiple people. That's really good. And if we could, uh, if, uh, I just wanted to ask Steve first of all, and then others about what inspired you to take the initiative locally in forming a local group. Steve, you, um, you, you started a group in Leicester, which appeared to, uh, appeared to grow very, very fast indeed. Uh, can you tell us what inspired you to do that? Well, there's two things really. There's the Enough is Enough group that's set up in Leicester. Uh, I can't claim any responsibility for leading that, uh, but I am, I've been involved from the beginning. And it's just obviously that it's important that we all work together. And what's been really amazing, as you've just said, Richard, is the actual growth, the speed of the growth. I mean, we set this group up about two weeks ago. And just as a couple of examples of how quickly it's grown, we've now got more than 700 followers on our Facebook page. And at the first initial organizing meeting last week, more than 50 people turned up. Um, so it's that speed of growth and the number of different kinds of organizations and interests that it covers and how it covers the whole city. Um, so I think that's really, really um, interesting and important. And then I focused, we might come on to this, I focus more on leading the uh, inflation tracker price rises uh, element of enough is enough. Yeah, well, well, can you tell, I mean, you mentioned that. Can you just tell us a bit more about that? That's one of the things that Leicester Enough is Enough is doing, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so one of the first things we've done is it's part of the, the overall initiative is we set up a, a Leicester Enough is Enough inflation tracking group. It's a rather long title. <laughs> but basically what we did, we decided to do is we work with one or two local food banks 
um, asked them if they could give us a list of the most commonly um, requested and used items from the food banks. And then I called to, I just put a call out, said I was happy to lead that piece of work, got some volunteers to say they'd help me. And we are now up and running. Um, in fact, we've been gathering more data today. And what we've done is we've, we're focusing on three main shops, Aldi, Co-op and Tesco's. We have 12 items that we're tracking the price of. And once a month, at the end of the month, we're going to record the price of each of those items. <clears throat> and then we can give the inflation rate for the city of Leicester for those items as a basket of goods for, that, for, the, for the month. So our first figure will hopefully be on the 1st of October for September, which means that also we can track the price of each individual item across shops. We can track the price of a basket of goods in each shop. And then obviously we can work out the inflation rates and then we can do it overall for the city as a general figure to see what the real inflation rate is for ordinary people here in the city. And then we're going to already we're planning to issue our first press release on the 30th of September to link with a day of action that's happening in the city the following day on the 1st of October. And who's involved in the campaign then, Steve? Have you got local organisations that are involved or is it all just individuals? Um, at the moment, it's mainly just individuals and it's all, it's all going so fast it's hard to keep up. I know, for instance, Unite Community Branch this week at their branch meeting uh, agreed unanimously to support enough is enough for example and we're trying to work one of the actions we're doing on 1st of October we're trying to work with the Bakers Union because there's a long going campaign there at the um, one of the biggest employers in Leicester Samworth Brothers to unionize and get unionized uh, union recognition enough is enough is planning on working with the Bakers Union to leaflet and uh, the workers outside that factory and then we're doing a day of action on the 1st of October in the city centre and in the morning of the 1st of October in the local communities on some of the estates just to raise the issues of the, the key demands. So it's largely individuals, but the way it's going, I'm sure more and more organisations are going to be joining in with it. It's, it's, it sounds like it. you've had you've had contact from Acorn as well, I understand. Yes, I haven't personally, but yes, there, there have been discussions. Yeah. That's uh, that's really interesting. Stuart, uh, yeah, I mean, your campaign's emerged in a slightly different way in Nottingham, hasn't it? Um, yes, I mean, we've just been involved in a Save Nottingham Libraries campaign, which is on the cusp of success. And, and part of that involved um, intense work in local areas. And I, and I emphasize intense because I do watch what Acorn do online. And when you get involved in a campaign to save libraries in a working class area, you can't stop. You know, the, the, the campaign develops a very fast rhythm. Um, and so, we, you know, now that we're approaching success on that, we're keen to try to replicate that around the cost of living crisis. So with many more people and, and using the online tools that are available to organize people, but we, but involving going into local areas, knocking on doors, is not necessary, putting leaflets through doors, because, you know, with social media, I mean, one of the things I've noticed, we, we during the People's Assembly campaign, the, the first burst in 2013, we used a thing called Nation Builder, which used IP addresses to plot out on a map where your supporters were. And what we realized was that we had about um, initially about 1,500 email addresses and they were concentrated in the middle class parts of Nottingham. And there were these deserts in St. Anne's and yeah. Meadows, which are the poorest, some of the poorest parts of the country, in fact. And the way that you have to get to those people, because they're not within those left networks that we exist in, is you need to go into those areas and, and talk to people and let them know who you are and what you're doing. And, and leafling can be a great way of doing that. But I have been following very, because I'm Nottingham's a you know, sister city to Leicester. So I've been following very closely what they've been doing. We just, we just haven't been able to replicate their success as yet. But we're meeting on Tuesday um, to begin that process. But it is inspiring. It's, it's, it sort of feels like cheating. To, to see what Leicester have done and see what works and go, I oh, would just copy them then. Yeah, it's not cheating. It's combined and uneven developments. You know. <laughs> Great history in the movement. Um, can I, uh, uh, you, you've had a, uh, you, you've had a pots and pans protest, was it? Or was that Nottingham? How did that go? I mean, you know, amongst comrades, it went very well. It got some media attention, but it didn't, it wasn't enormous. And um, whilst I think it, 
you know, it is it, what I realized was that people are happy to bang pots and pans together for 45 minutes to an hour. I thought people might be a bit shy or embarrassed, at, you know, being English, but, but people are very happy to do it. Um, would I do it again? Possibly not. I mean, what works in Latin America might not work here. Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things that Leicester were planning to do is to protest at a local energy company. Um, Dave, you've uh, you, you've had um, uh, uh, again from coming from a slightly different direction in Brighton. It's a don't pay group, isn't it? In Brighton, don't pay UK. Dave, you're on mute. Sorry, mate. Yeah, it's a it's a don't pay movement, and it's had extraordinary quick growth and success. And it's only been going about uh, two to three weeks. Um, stalls, leafleting. Uh, press releases, a, a stunt or two, uh, and a public meeting last Tuesday between 150 and 170 people came. Now, there is good news about Don't Pay UK, but there's also cautionary tales. Mm. And the good news is that it is extremely well organised at a national level. The, the, um, it's a model of how to organise the, the advice given on their national website. And locally, they seem to be... Uh, um, I say they, we, um, uh, seem to be extremely well organised. Um, I think people are a bit taken aback by the speed of which, but I'm not taken aback. This thing's going to grow and grow. Um, that's the upside. The downside is that Don't Pay UK is single issue. And a lot of the people involved at the um, organising level in Brighton come from a very different tradition, an anarchist tradition, and they object to concepts of leadership, object to concepts of programme, and object strongly to us putting forward what our man was suggesting, very importantly, that we must put the socialist perspective. And they don't seem to like that. On the other hand, you know, let a thousand flowers bloom, and this is organic development. And one good thing, I see that the local don't pay UK um, have uh, approached a number of other local organisations regarding a demonstration outside the TUC. As for the future, yeah, um, we've got another public meeting coming up um, October the 12th. We've got organising meetings, umpteen WhatsApp groups. Um, so that the good news is the intense energy and the way that, and other comrades will have uh, experienced this, the way that people are approaching us, snatching leaflets out of our hands when, we're, when we've got stalls, they're interested and they're upset and they're angry. And the final point I make at this point is that um, people who don't want to broaden it into bigger issues, well, you just look back, you know, 1926, the general strike, uh, the uh, anti-Nazi league, the miners strike, um, the uh, in Brighton, a very successful coalition against the cuts 10 years ago, 50 organisations involved. You can't stop people working together and you can't stop people raising questions. And you certainly can't stop us raising questions of socialism and uh, socialist analysis and the socialist programme. Well, thanks very much, Dave. It's very inspiring. Len, um, uh, you're, you're experiencing Cardiff uh, again, I imagine, slightly different. Uh, from uh, from uh, the way things are taking shape in other cities, but also some similarities. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm I'm speaking on behalf of People's Assembly Wales, not just Cardiff. Oh, right. Secretary. Don't, don't worry. Uh, um, Adam, who you did ask to speak, first of all, is the Cardiff organiser, but he is actually uh, occupying outside off Gem at this very moment as we speak. So, so I've I've been drafted in. Um, <laughs> To, in his stead, really, this often happens. Um, I'm, I'm the older one with uh, not to, not not very mobile, so and he's the eight younger um, active one. And um, anyway, there you go. Um, no, just to say that um, it is different, um, um, but uh, uh, you know similarities and differences. The um, um, uh, in a sense, People's Assembly Wales has been going since 2014. Uh, we're quite different to People's Assembly. Um, uh, 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 that exists in, uh, elsewhere in, 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 in England and Scotland, in the sense that um, uh, we, we, we've, um, because we have Welsh government and because that Welsh government is Labour controlled, 
um, and has now entered into a cooperation agreement with Plaid, which is quite a radical agreement, but actually needs uh, uh, a lot of pressure behind it in order to speed up implementation and order to radicalize a lot of the policies. And that's 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 what we're trying to do. So in a sense, uh, we're in a different political environment and a different political context, um, but one which we're very conscious of not only putting forward alternative policies, uh, policies and, um, and being more political in what we do, but also in the sense of arguing that the Welsh Government um, uh, should use its powers uh, to the utmost, even as far as a constitutional crisis, to challenge the Tory government on a whole range of issues. And uh, so, so in a sense, um, what uh, and what I've tried to do is that I've posted a number of links. Um, because I, obviously there's not much, and there's not a huge amount, I could speak for hours, I suspect as everybody else could as well, but I've, I've posted a lot of links so that you can see what we've been up to over, over the time, but more recently um, around the cost of living crisis, we've just launched today actually um, our cost of living crisis petition, um, uh, which has a series of demands which go uh, politically much further probably than enough is enough and um, and don't pay and so on and make and make the links given the context we're in um and um and that has the support of a uh, hundred people across the left in wales including uh, beth winter mp um helith uh, wachen who is um uh, Senate member, that's our Welsh Parliament member, um, and uh, the, uh, a number of trade union leaders, uh, Socialist Workers Party, Left Unity, um, uh, Labour Party activists, and so on. And and in a sense that uh, those hundred people are asking people of Wales to now sign this petition, and and we're hoping to use this as um, as a, a vehicle, in a sense, um, to give some focus. Um, uh, to bring to, to uh, enough is enough and um, don't pay and uh, people power and other groups um, on a local level um, to do the sort of things you're talking about. And just to say that we, we've also, um, uh, we, we just recently, um, where I live in the bottom of the Rhonda here uh, in near Flantristens in Wales, um, we recently, uh, two years ago, uh, our local a &E was faced with effective closure uh, um, and uh, we organised and had a very similar um, response to what other people are saying is that uh, within, within five days of the announcement, we had a demonstration at the health board with 700 people and we essentially uh, marched in as the public and occupied it. Um, and uh, within two weeks, had a Facebook group of 22,000 people. Um, and uh, the uprising was such um, that um, within six months, uh, uh, together with political support in the Senate, um, we, we won. And, um, and uh, all the appointments that needed to be made to keep the ANE open were, were, were done. So, uh, so, um, so we, we, in, a, in addition to trying to coordinate things, um, we also are very active on a local level. But and how we how we manage this in Wales, and it's quite interesting in terms of what Amanda, and this is my last point, is that we meet um, every uh, other Monday night online um, and have done so for about three years. And um, these meetings are open meetings where anybody on the left is obviously we, we don't want Tories turning up, but but the it is a meeting to um, network uh, and because Wales is very difficult to meet up because of the geography. You know, it's quicker to get from Cardiff to London. It is from Wrexham to Cardiff, for example. And uh, we meet at these open meetings every every um, every fortnight, and they vary in size from five or six over a holiday period to twenty when there's a big issue and so on. And, and, and they're pretty representative of everybody in Wales. And we supplement these with a messenger group, which is active 24 seven basically, and follows through decisions and, ca and campaigning issues and shares information about what's going on. And because of that uh, openness, um, non-sectarian openness across the left, but also with a political um, cutting edge, if you like, um, in terms of demands and particularly with the cooperation agreement, um, we've been able to stimulate a whole right help uh, build. No, it's not just, it's wrong to say lead as such. It's uh, it's, it's helping to form and support um, uh, local groups and action across Wales. 
um, and and to just keep people informed of what's going on. So, yeah, I think that's that's it as much as I can. In a Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Version, please have a look at some of the links I've put up. Will do, and, and I'm sure everybody else will too. Look, I mean, this this has been really really interesting. And what and, and what we're getting from people is some of you have set up groups where they haven't existed. Others are in very new initiatives like Don't Pay. Uh, others of you have had a small uh, or, a, or, a, or a significant People's Assembly group previously, but you haven't uh, had the opportunity to, uh, to, to, to uh, connect quite as uh, vigorously with the mass movement until now and have done so uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the growth of the cost of living campaign. Um, but you know, you're kind of catching things on the up. Um, what changes do you need to make to the way politics is normally done to be able to really make sure that, as the question that was put earlier in the Q&A uh, put it, that you actually engage with a wide layer of ordinary people? Because we're not talking, are we, about the usual circles of the British left and far left, uh, or even the usual circles of trade union militants in the public and private sector. We're talking about a situation in which over 500,000 people signed up to enough is enough in a matter of days, in which a majority of the population, when polled, support the demands that enough is enough is putting forward, where people are about to, uh, people are already really hungry and about to get really cold and really ill um, and desperate and angry. And there's a mood also of defiance. You can see it as well as potentially despair. How are we going to change our whole way of doing things the whole the whole culture use this opportunity to not just to reach out but to build really mass local organizations that, of, of, of struggle um and what uh, what uh, what in your immediate experience and what in your what in what in your thinking has to change for that uh, len has whapped his hand straight up there <laughs> you want to go first yeah. then dave yeah just, just to quickly say i've, I've come <laughs> up with it and i'm sure i've read it in gramsci or somewhere else but I, I was I, I was in an argument, having a discussion, trying to encapsulate a change of mood and a change of uh, feeling last week, and I come up with this phrase, spontaneous radicalism. That uh, what seems to be happening is that uh, uh, people are experiencing this crisis so sharply, so badly, so deeply that um, when you, it's a bit like what uh, Man was saying about Iran. That when you, uh, that what when people when uh, you, uh, an issue comes up about um, energy, for example, energy prices, and um, uh, people immediately are almost saying that, um, uh, but the, w w well, what's the government doing about this? It's about profiteering. So um, people who might otherwise have been wary about making broader statements, I'm finding on the street, generally, in any debate about this, it, uh, that subject is immediately being, almost immediately being politically generalised to the wider context um, in terms of uh, a profiteering and in terms of the state. And, uh, and, and, and that's what I mean by spontaneous radicalism. And I think that just by, you know, people talk about single issues, and stuff, but just by raising those issues, you cannot avoid then getting into a political debate about what can be done about it. People raise it straight away within three or four sentences. Well, what can be done about it then? What can we do? And, uh, you know, is it just enough to do this? And, and so I think that the, the grounds are there spontaneously for us to link into. But we do need um, political demands. We need a political programme in order to uh, take that forward. Thanks very much, Len. Dave, I think you were the, the, the next in the rush of hands there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we're all rushing in. Um, I think the uh, the support the miners groups and the poll tax, anti poll tax union uh, were a marvellous model. And um, one thing that is happening in Brighton with the Don't Pay UK, um, I've expressed my reservations about that. But um, one thing that it is doing, it's setting up a number of local groups in the lo in the localities within the town. Yeah. And that's what's happened during the in some areas in the anti poll tax struggle and yeah. in the miners struggle. And so I think that's what we've got to do. There's no point in relying on the Labour Party. Obviously, the uh, the far left uh, grouplets um, are absent from from what's going on to a large extent, and that's that's quite a new development, isn't it, in British uh, protest movements? Um, so that's the first thing I want to say. The, the other thing I want to say is to pick up on this defiance. 
I happen to be, um, as well as a supporter of the tribune effects of parliamentary democracy, a great believer in direct action. Mm. Huge believer in direct action, having taken part, blah, blah, as most of us have in various actions. And uh, I think that um, we need, to, people are so angry. Um, I'll just give a quote from Lenin. Lenin had a wonderful quote. There are decades when nothing happens. There are weeks when decades happen. And we are, those, those weeks are upon us. And the anger is such, we know from our political histories in the estates and in working class communities in particular, that people get very angry and they say, you know, sod the law, sod what's going on. And so um, I think we should think about uh, occupations of the energy companies. Um, I think we also need to, uh, I, I wonder if MI5 will come knocking at my door for saying this. I think we need to consider the role of the media and how to stop it. Um, okay, one more thing, final thing is, um, is the raising, to repeat what a number of comrades have said, um, is about the raising, the permanent raising of the uh, in, in language people can understand, as well as for our more highfalutin groups, um, raising the political, the socialist demands. Thanks very much indeed, Dave. Uh, uh, interesting stuff. And I'm reminded that uh, when The Sun printed a front page about Arthur Scargill, in which it tried to suggest that he was a Nazi because they caught they caught a quick frame photograph of him with his arm out and rigged it to make it look like he was, you know, doing a doing one one of those old Nazi salutes. The print workers realized what was going on and they refused to print it. And they had to print yeah. a yeah. whole edition yeah. of the Sun newspaper with just a, a, a the front page saying, you know, the, the trade unions wouldn't let us print the front page that we wanted to. Yeah, so I remember yeah, I had it yeah. cut out on my wall for the rest of the dispute because it reminded me <laughs> of the power of the workers. Um, and, you know, in a way, aren't we? You talk about the miners' strike, you talk about the poll tax. This is like potentially like all of those sort of mixed up together with different sectors of workers out on strike, with people not wanting to pay, with people unable to pay, with people desperate and angry. Stuart, what, what's your take on how we can connect with this? Look, I, I love the fact that just as I was writing my little notes of what to say and put yellow vests at the top, people started posting about the yellow vests in the chat because it is true that we didn't have a yellow vest movement. And it is also true that in my optimism of the will, um, I organised one of the few yellow vest protests outside of, you know, in, in England. Um, it was fine for Nottingham, 100 people came. It was the coldest hour of the coldest day of the coldest of, of the year. Um, uh, it didn't take off. I mean, I started reading about 1848, thinking we were entering into the springtime of the peoples. But for whatever reason, it didn't happen. But I, I do think, though, um, you know, the, the, the fact that the British press went all out to convince people that there were fascists involved in the Yellow Vest, and there were, um, but there were also many, many left-wingers involved in the Yellow Vest movement in, in France. But the fact that the British press went out of its way to do that shows that they were concerned, that the elite were concerned that this movement would spread to Britain. And, and of course, we see that in France, their energy costs have risen only slightly. I mean, there are other reasons for that. The, the, they have nuclear power stations more than we do. Um, but Britain has gone through in the last 20 years um, a number of serious institutional crises. I mean, the police are utterly discredited. Our parliamentarians are utterly discredited as, as, as expenses stealing bandits. Um, you know, the um, the sort of the level of the crisis in Britain, I think, is so significant that, that you know, that people have been beaten down over 40 years so much that it's not the case that we can rely on institutions that, that have existed for a century that, you know, they've been smashed up. I think, I mean, I welcome the end of the sectarian left, and I do think that it's happened, and I, there are probably a number of reasons for that. First of all, the length of the human lifespan means that a lot of their leaders who emerged in the 1950s and 60s are now dying off. But crucially, it's the rise of the internet and the ability for us, when there's a scandal in one of these organisations, and there always is, because any organisation that has the same leader, male leader, usually for 50 years, there will be scandals. And they were covered up for decades, and then all of a sudden, the SWP being the most um, high profile one, this stuff 
emerges onto the internet and they can't hide it anymore. They can't just expel a branch or expel a bunch of women and, you know, and pretend it never happened. So, um, so I think that that, that those types of organizations are now gone and, and will not return. They will continue to exist, but they'll never grow to a large size. Um, look, we live at a, at a, a sort of a, a revolutionary moment. We've gone through a revolution in communicative affairs, whereby, you know, for years, centuries, we went through the revolutions that the printing press created, you know, whether it was the collapse of the Catholic Church or, you know, um, or, you know, whatever that followed. For hundreds of years, we've, we've watched as the printing, the, the march of the printing press through Europe transformed the world that we live in. We are just in the early days, the first 50 years of the rise of the internet and what that will transform. And the, the way it was put to me, the best way I heard it explained was that all, you know, printing to start with, and then radio and television and everything else, were all one to many forms of communication. You know, one person wrote a book, many people read it. One person made a television program, many people watched it. The internet, what makes it revolutionary is it's a many to many um, communication form. So we can all speak and, you know, the, 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 the capitalists will say, oh, well, there's, there's conspiracy theories in the internet. Well, th there was only one conspiracy theory for a long time, and that was the one that the BBC and the capitalist press told us. And now that anybody can put out a conspiracy theory, many of which are true, most of which are not, they're panicked, and, and rightly so. And so we should, as socialists, recognise that the this new technology that is emerging, that we're now benefiting, you know, we're on a little television channel, all of our own, having a panel show, and I've enjoyed it all night, and I'll be coming back to the next one and all subsequent ones. Um, that is enormously significant. And the um, on that, I just want to tell comrades about something that we've discovered quite recently. Not discovered, it's existed for a long time. It's called Reddit. Now, you may have heard of it in relation to the far right and the incel movement, these, these, these nasty right-wing little boys and men. That was a problem for Reddit 10 years ago because it allows anything on it. Um, but those Nazis have now moved on to 4chan, 8chan, now Telegram, and they've disappeared. But Reddit itself is, um, it in Nottingham, for example, which is a city, and I'll be generous, it's a city of a maximum of about 350,000 people. There is one subreddit about Nottingham, which contains 56,000 people. And they are real people there, you know, there's no benefit to setting up, you know, lots of little Reddit accounts and well, there are, obviously there are, there's a little bit of a benefit, but many of them are students and Nottingham's a student city and before they come, they go into the Nottingham subreddit and they ask where should I live, what's it like, but when I, for our pots and pans protest, we, we went around street leafleting um, and tried to, um, you know, break down areas into little bits you could do in, in 50 minutes. And, you know, it's a, it's a project that will, that will complete over the coming years. But I went into this subreddit, which I checked from time to time, um, and there was a, uh, a comment about our protest, not posted by me or anybody I know. And then I read down the comments and further down, there was a link to a previous comment from a couple of weeks ago that was a picture of my leaflet, our leaflet on someone's floor saying, did anyone get this through the door? And another entire discussion about the content of the leaflet that I personally had missed. So I just want people to be aware that, you know, it is a, it's a strange thing to go on a, what's effectively a new social network. But, you know, given that we're all activists, I thought I should try and get that across to you. So sorry, I've gone on too long. But those no, are no, 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 thanks very much. Stuart. And a very different angle on the, on, on things which makes all of this uh, uh, completely uh, invaluable. Steve, um, where's, it, yeah. where's it going and what are you going to do? You're right, in one minute, uh, one, there's a number of things, but because we're leaderless, but we're, some of us who are involved are trying to uh, encourage certain things. One is self-action. If somebody says, why don't we do a leaflet? We say, good idea. Why don't you get some people together and do the leaflet? Yeah. Another thing, look at all the channels. We're doing face-to-face, -face, so we're doing leaflets, we're going out to the estates, but we're not just relying on Facebook because that's a certain demographic, certain age. So we're looking at Instagram. We're looking at some of the other things. We're looking at Twitter. Another thing we're looking at is producing videos instead of written leaflets, because we think a lot of people these days will watch videos. So I think the question for us is, we don't want just, we don't want the old hacks taking it all over. We want people active themselves. And so far, we're having a lot of success. I'm not saying it's going to carry on like that. But one of the things we really want is to draw in new people, especially younger people, and show them that they can do things and just don't sit around waiting for people like us to do it for them. Thank you so much, Steve. Look, I'm going to try and draw this to a close. I know that we've got a group that's going to be formed in Hull. 
I know in Newham they had a fantastic meeting. I was talking to comrades today about setting that up. I know people in Hastings that are trying to get something organized. And I'm sure there are loads more of these things that I just don't know the first thing about, but we're trying to get people together. At the moment, the coordination is all being done from the top down by the, um, the national organizations that have come together. That's great, but we also need coordination at the base. And you don't need me, after you heard what Aman had to say, to spell out why that's important, not just to organize our day-to-day -day work, but also as part of our strategy, our strategy to build a working class movement that is capable of running society. And therefore, what I was going to suggest is that the, 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 the four groups that, I, that, are, that are represented here tonight form a joint platform uh, or some sort of social media platform that other local groups can connect with so that we have horizontal connection between the groups as well as vertical connection between the groups, which I think will be absolutely uh, uh, important for sharing ideas, but also for keeping the struggle going in difficult times. Um, and really what I wanted with the last question, and please very, very, very brief answers is, you know, to those of us that don't have local groups in our borough or our town or our city, what would your brief advice be? What should we do next? Well, I would say join the Leicester Enough is Enough Facebook group and look how they do it, because um, that's been quite inspiring to me. And just, you know, keep in touch with other people. Feel free to ask questions of people who've done it before. Um, and, you know, just, you know, follow what you think, because we all do things differently. Or as Tony Greenstein says in the chat, set one up. Which I think is, uh, is 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 an excellent slogan for for all of us. Anybody else on? Uh, on yeah, what on, I think should happen day? is that okay? Yeah, yeah go you're on. here. What I think should happen is that in localities, and it's a shame this hasn't happened in Brighton, that some people should get invite. Enough is enough. Don't pay UK CWU local trades councils, different organisations um, in each town or city or, or village and um, say, let's get together, let's, uh, let's call it an organising meeting, let's get something going, and sure, then we can do all the things that we've been doing for, 30 year, for 10, 20, 30 years, including the new social media um, and uh, leaflet, uh, leaflet to advertise the meeting. And um, I would think that in every city you'll get two, 300 people turning up at that initial organising, non-sectarian uh, meeting, um, and it can be under the umbrella of um, anti-austerity or that's whatever brilliant. people decide on the night. That's brilliant. And we've got, a, we've got a draft letter that we've sent out to all SLN uh, members, um, a draft letter that you can adapt, you can use it, and you can send it out to all local organisations, to your Unite Community Branch, your CWU, to, every, to ACORN, to all of the local organisations, inviting them to a meeting, or you can just set one up and invite them uh, in your in your in your own way. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much, everybody. Len, you've got one last comment you wanted to make. Oh, and, and, uh, just to add to what they were saying, I think it's very important that uh, wherever you are, that you know how people locally communicate in terms of social media. It could be Facebook, it could be Twitter, it could be Instagram, it could be Reddit or whatever. And it's very very important that uh, you make sure that what you do locally is known through that uh, social media. Um, whatever it is. Um, and I think it's very important that happens because we want to move away, I think, from the trade councils and so on. They're all very laudable organisations. Um, but I think we need to appeal straight to people who are really, uh, you know, we need to appeal to that spontaneous radicalism, if you like, you know, and, and start to mobilise that. So many ideas we've heard tonight, I can't believe it, from, from Iran, from, uh, from Sri Lanka, from you know two groups of striking workers and and uh, and from you back to uh, back to Esther but thanks very much all of you for uh, for coming let's stay in touch and hopefully the next time we try to coordinate a number of different groups horizontally there won't be four of you there'll be 12 of you then 20 of you then 100 then 500 and we'll have like with the anti uh, like with the minor support uh, committees conference or the all britain anti poll tax federation uh, or the councils of action that we had in 1920 that stopped them sending uh, se sending uh, uh, weapons to the you know to fight against the, uh, the, the you know the russian revolution uh, you know we'll be able to have re a real mass workers organization on the ground back to esther and thanks very much everybody <laughs>